Hi everyone, Cinexoft here. This is Pocket Chip. It's a game console, retro game console, portable Linux computer and development board. And it only cost $49. So, uh, what we have here? We have a QWERTY keyboard with arrow keys, numbers, uh, home and power button, we have a recessive touchscreen, uh, some IOS to control external hardware. Uh, if we look closer, it doesn't look straight here, but I can confirm that you can add your own headers and it will work just fine. Uh, they have two holes here. One is for pencils and it will uh, keep it straight and the other one here for pens and I can find an old USB Wi-Fi dongle with antenna and I can also use it. Okay. Oh. And here you have a small hole maybe to use a necklace to carry around okay so at the back we've got a 11.1 watt hour battery as well as the board so the complete casing can be removed uh, but I'm just going to remove the board now okay and here you have the markings for the pins so that's a tiny board here we get Bluetooth and Wi-Fi this one is a flash USB port and uh, audio output micro USB port for power and I think programming this one is you want to connect an external battery uh, on the back there is a plastic cover now but here we have the all winner R8 processor as well as a SD RAM 512 megabyte SD RAM. Oh yeah and uh, something a little convenient on the side here of the headers you can see the the pin names. So if you are connecting to a breadboard it can be more convenient than checking some documents. Okay let's Let's put it back in place and have a look at the user interface. <coughs> this is a Cortex A8 processor at 1, one gigahertz, so it takes a little while to boot, it's normal. And you don't need to install anything because there is already a internal flash, 4 gigabyte internal flash. And it's, you need to charge it with a, this cable or any other USB, micro USB to USB cable. I think the boot takes about one minute. Okay, and then we get to this page here uh, to explain a bit how it works. So you can use the keys to stroke, go through it. This is the touch screen, so you can also it explains the different features, terminal, Pico. 8 for games, some voice application, and this is a resistive touch screen, so you can use like a pencil for better accuracy. Okay, let's exit. So once uh, we start, we have the battery level here, the Wi Fi, settings, so I've connected to Wi Fi, no problem. It's only 2.4 GHz. 
Uh, this one is brightness. And this one is volume. There's no speaker, but this is the volume for the headphones, I think. So this is a Linux computer, so we have a terminal. So let's check if it's working, yes. Okay, behind the camera, it's a little hard to use. Uh, this is the uh, storage. The root FS is 3.6 GB in total and I have installed a few things already so there is 3 GB left memory 496 MB and let's check the processor itself The keyboard has a tabulation here, so completion works, and we can see it's a single core Cortex A8 processor by All Winner. And this is the R8 processor. It's basically the same as All Winner uh, A13. So um, this is Debian. So let's show this. Okay, Debian 8. So APT is working fine. Uh, let's install HTOP. Oh, yes, I need to be sudo, of course. It will ask me the password for cheap user. And the password is cheap. It's a small utility, so it will not take too long to install. So basically anything you can install on Debian, you can install here, since it's running Debian. And I have installed Doom. I will show you soon. But first, okay, quick look. HTOP. Okay. So, no problem. Mosquitoes everywhere. Uh, okay, so let's play Doom now. I think. Up. This is not pre-installed, huh? I have installed it separately. Okay. So I'm not going to play, I just show uh, it's running fine. And I will exit. Uh, yes, yeah, so the keys are a little strange to use the game. Maybe it can be reassigned because you use uh, those keys and the two keys here at the same time. This is the arrow keys, so it's uh, not convenient, but I'm sure there is a way to reassign the keys. Uh, yes. Okay, enough with the terminal. Obviously typing on the small keyboard like this is not convenient, so I recommend you install SSH server in case uh, you need to access the command line. And then there are some other applications, uh, like Pico 8. This is for retro gaming, and it also allows you to edit the game. And again in here, there is a, a small tutorial that explains how to play, how to jump, how to run. OK. 
okay not how to edit the game because you can you can edit the game okay there are some pre-installed games so let's take the first one Celeste Okay, this one is jump. Okay, I'm going to die because I never manage this. Alright, so you have a few games. Uh, this style that you can edit and play around. Okay, let's exit. Then there is another application to make music. So, yeah, this one I have not tried, but you have to connect the headphones because there's no speaker, all right? So I have not connected speaker either. So this is what you get. So I will exit. Okay. And here you have a text editor. So A B C D E F G. Okay. And uh, here you really have to use a, a pencil or some other input device because uh, the menus are uh, too small. Okay. And finally, you have a file browser. Okay, you can. Check some pictures. This one is a screenshot. Okay, I cannot open it. Okay, I'm not sure why, but the last time I could. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I did open it right now. Okay, and you have help on access to the menu on top. Yeah, but let's try to exit. Close windows. You can also press the button here to get back to the beginning you also have help menu and all documentation is on the getchip.com website so you can learn how to control the IOS reinstall the firmware if something goes wrong and so on okay this is the help and okay so I go back home like this so yeah it's quite it's quite fun to use you can play games use uh, the Linux machine just like a Raspberry Pi uh, the performance should be very similar to the original Raspberry Pi it has uh, the same amount of memory 512 megabytes and a similar processor a little faster actually so let's check the exit menu. Oh, and one more thing. No. Uh, yes, I've seen some people manage to change the icons here, but I haven't. I haven't studied how to do this yet. Okay, but you can hack the firmware obviously as you want. So. I think that's enough for now. So you have uh, four options in the exit menu, flash software, reboot and sleep. So let's turn it off. And that's it. So that's a, that's a cool device. You can do many things with it. You can play. You can learn about IoT thanks to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's portable. 
it's quite fun and it's only 49 dollars so it may be a nice gift for your children or even for yourself all right thanks for watching bye bye